Hello, my name is Alexandra Emanuele. I'm the digital content editor of Global Food Safety Resource. I'm here in Seattle at the GFSI conference. And today I'm speaking with Nikos Manuselis of Agrino. Nikos, thank you for speaking with us today. Thank you for the invitation. Of course. Tell me a bit about the work you do with your software platform, Foodakai, in extracting data from the supply chain. So what we do is that we scan food safety data globally from uh, official sources and authorities around the world, uh, data that's coming in different languages, not only English. So we scan sources that have information in uh, Chinese, Japanese, Czech, French, Greek, and so it goes. And uh, what we do with the data is that then we translate it into English, we harmonize it, we annotate it with the right taxonomies, as we say. We put the right product codes, company codes, all the codes that you need to generate the insights, and we deliver insights as a service to the food industry. Okay. And how can that data be used in real-world scenarios, predicting food fraud? As a matter of fact, we had this discussion yesterday with one of uh, the large uh, retailers in uh, the UK. Uh, they are trying to assess the risk of working with specific countries or with specific suppliers. They work with more than 3,000 uh, or even more than 3,000 uh, suppliers around the world. And what they're looking at is whether they can evaluate what is found in the data about the countries, the emerging risks, the hazards that seem to be trending in ingredients or raw materials or packaged products and take decisions on where they should invest their testing money. So that's one of the testing scenarios that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And is it used in, in predicting food fraud? Or? It is. Uh, this is where we put a little bit of uh, AI in place uh, together with other data sources. Uh, so we try to see if we can find correlations between product recalls uh, and trends in product recalls, uh, fraud specific incidents and country indicators like corruption indicators mm -hmm. or spikes in the prices. And if we find an indicator, a connection, a correlation that is statistically, statistically significant, then we point this out to the decision maker. Fascinating. I mean, we were talking earlier about how your data has some really interesting things to say about milk production in Europe, for example. Um, is, is that an insight you can you know, elaborate a little bit more on? So what we do is that uh, every three months or so we, do a, we take a deep dive into specific sectors uh, and data concerning these sectors, and the daily sector is such an example. And we try to look at uh, product categories like uh, milk, uh, cheese, butter, yogurt, or other relevant products, and see for these product categories, and the critical ingredients that are being used in products uh, that are going together, like for example fruits in uh, frozen yogurt, uh, what are the trends? What are the trends uh, of the past 10 years? Which were the trends last year? What can we see as an emerging issue or number of issues uh, that uh, come? And then again highlight this as a potential uh, issue that someone has to investigate further. And after this is done, what typically happens is that uh, the people in the quality and safety teams, they sit with our team and we start digging deeper mm -hmm. into what does this mean, why does this happen, what's happening with specific suppliers. Yeah, I love that you could really drill into the, de into the data and find out what the particular bacterium is that's causing issues in, say, milk production, or, you know, that it's a bacterium that's causing so many recalls. I think it's a, it's a journey mm -hmm. to the data. It starts by the highlights, some of the highlights that we see, uh, and then it, this creates an opportunity to start digging deeper, drilling down uh, into the data to find what is relevant to really important decisions uh, that people are, have to take. Uh, where should I invest my lab testing uh, money? Uh, how can I assess uh, before I order a while uh, I'm expecting an order from another country? Uh, what will happen uh, in, a, in a lot of arriving with uh, products from a supplier? 
uh, and so many other diseases of can support. I'm sure that your data has made a real impact in these scenarios. <laughs> um, is there any stories that, or one story in particular that you might want to share with us in, in regards to that? My favorite uh, story is from a confectionery products uh, manufacturer. Um, we were demonstrating uh, the platform to them mm -hmm. and uh, we were testing their name into the global incidents uh, that were associated. Uh, they were okay, we know this, we are monitoring uh, what is happening with our products. And suddenly uh, a border rejection from China mm -hmm. came up mm -hmm. that they were not aware of. And they took a note immediately and said, okay, we didn't know about this. Mm, that's interesting. Fascinating. Well, thank you so much for sharing this with us. And uh, I look forward to seeing what the data reveals and the stories it tells in the future. And the stories it tells. Thank you. <laughs>